Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, church. Greet your neighbor, good morning. And win today. Greet as many as possible around you. Good morning. And win today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may resume your seats in Jesus' name. Yes, good morning and win today. If you are all over the world, we also want to greet you good morning and win today. Hallelujah. Yes, we have no option than to win. Anywhere we go, we win. We are born to win. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, anywhere we go, we win. Because we are born to win. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, it is time for God's word. Are you ready? Yes. God Almighty does nothing without his word. It is God's word that teaches us how to please God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The greatest book on earth is the word of God. I mean the Bible. Can I see your Bibles? Can I see your Bibles? Some are waving their laptops. Some are waving their phones. Can I see your Bibles? Can you please wave them? Just wave your Bibles. Hallelujah. The greatest book on earth is the Word of God. The Bible. It is a book that reads us even as we read it. Imagine such a book. A book that reads us even as we read it. It is an uncommon sort of book that requires an uncommon sort of reading. What do I mean? I mean total commitment that includes love for God's word. Interest in God's word. Faithfulness to God's word. And quality time for God's word. What do I mean by quality time? You set a special time. You set a special time to study, to read. The Bible. What a wonderful book. It's the chronicle of God's love for his people. From the darkness before hidden to eternity with him in heaven. You are in it. I am in it. And most importantly, God Almighty is in it. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Through the Bible, God wants you and I to know what he knows. He wants you and I to see what he is looking at. The Holy Spirit wants his wisdom deposited in our hearts. He wants his instinct and very nature to be evident in us. You see, reading the Bible is good for us as Christians. Because our lives depend on knowing it. Tell about reading the Bible. It's good for you as a Christian. Because your life depends on knowing it. Yes, your life depends on knowing it. But you see, knowing facts about Jesus Christ 
does not change our relationship with him. Mm. Knowing facts about Jesus Christ does not change our relationship with him. You may read or study the Bible for many years. If you do not leave it or act it, your mind is not renewed. Your mind is not renewed. You may read, think, and pray all day. But unless you do the word, you act the word, and live in the word as well, you miss the point. Today's message is titled, Don't Miss the Point. Tell about don't miss the point. Say to your other neighbor, don't miss the point. Say to your other neighbor next to you, don't miss the point. And our proof text shall be taken from the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 33. We start our reading from verse 31. Are you there? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I read. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people and they hear your words. But they do not do them. For with their mouths they show much love. But their heart pursues their own gain. Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on the instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. Verse 33. And when this come to pass, surely it will come. Then they will know that a prophet has been among them. Hallelujah. Today, we have word hearers. Mere listeners. And good talkers. But not to us. Are you one of them? Are you one of them? Today we have word hearers, men listeners, good talkers, but not to us. Are you one of them? Let us examine ourselves, people of God, because this is what is happening in the house of God. And the church cannot continue like this. The church is not fun and games. If you are all over the world, you are not excluded. We are here because you are there. Where do you belong? God is talking to you. This is a time of introspection. I mean self-examination. to examine ourselves because of the coming judgment. The coming judgment. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 32 verse 36 it says, and the Lord will judge his people. Examine yourself. Where do you stand? Peter 4 17 says that the time is come that judgment
attachments will begin in the house of God. Judgment. Examine yourself, people of God. Where do you stand? Are you a word hearer? A man listener? Or as a minister, a good talker? Second Corinthians 13 verse 5 says, Say, examine yourselves. Know whether you are in the faith. Don't you know yourselves that Christ is in you? Or ye are reprobate? You see, many Christians, believers, I mean children of God, are hiding under having the knowledge of the scripture, I mean of the Bible. We boast of our knowledge of the Bible, of mastering it, mastering the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Without any iota of doubt, having the knowledge of the scripture is good. It's important. It's essential. It's valuable. Yes, it's profitable. But you see, no matter how much you master the scriptures, without true obedience to what you read, without true obedience to what you hear, you are still wearing spiritual diapers, meaning you are missing the point. You are still wearing spiritual diapers. You may know the word. You may be familiar with your original Greek and Hebrew of the word. You may know the history of the word, but that is all wasted energy. If you do not live it or practice it, it is a wasted energy. See, we need to know these people of God. We need to know this. It is possible to be sound in doctrine and know the word and be lost. Yes, you can be sound in doctrine. You know the word and you are lost. You may know the word and never be converted. Yes, and never be converted. Because knowledge is not the key, but obedience is. Knowledge is not the key, but obedience is. We must realize this, people of God. See, it is not only committing the world to memory, which is valuable. It is letting the world become an integral part of our being. Because it lives in us. Part of our being. Look at what the Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 22. It said many of us, it explains there. It said many of us are deceiving ourselves. Because we are not doing the word. We are not acting the word. We are not living the word. We only hear it. We only study it. Thereby missing the point. Missing the point. And I love what the Bible says in Matthew 7, from verse 26 to 27. It says, The hearer must be the doer of the word. Or else the entire structure is trying to build will be destroyed. And so, thank you, Lord. The one preaching, speaking, and talking must not only talk the talk, but must also walk the walk. I mean, he must match his action with his words. Or else, he is a hypocrite. My mentor, Prophet Timmy Joshua, 
says, he said to us, a hypocrite says one thing and thinks and does another. A hypocrite says one thing and thinks and does another. It is the doers of the word that receives things from God. I do wise men that in men they do not reach God. People of God, if you do not do or act on what you are hearing or what you have read in the scripture, you are missing the point. The Bible says the wise man is the doer of the world. Do you understand that? It says the wise man is the doer of the world. What is the opposite of being wise? You know it. Meaning if you are not the doer of the world, it's opposite. So the wise man is the doer of the world. While others hear, but does not act upon it. Who are they? Or who is he? He is a sense knowledge hearer. A mental center. He responds to reason instead of the word of God. If he has faith in anything, it's a man. What man has done? Science, works, and organization. People of God. What a danger is a religion of words if there is no corresponding action. We have nothing but mental assets without action. Today in the church, we confess, I am a faith man, yet denying it in what? In action. Confessing faith in the word, denying it in action. That is not the pattern God wants for his church. If there is faith as we confess, there must be works that correspond with the faith. Because faith must be worked out in action. Must be worked out in action. Faith must be backed up with appropriate action. The Bible says faith without works is what? Is dead. That word is the action. It's the action. Our works proves our faith. Our works perfect our faith. Our works complete our faith. It completes our faith. For a man of faith does not only know his faith, but also shows his faith. And the unique place where faith is expressed is in our works. Meaning, your faith is not complete without works. Without works, I mean action. There is no faith. Faith is dead. When we say words, what are we talking about? We're talking about action, acting on the word, doing what the word says. For good behavior and right character, or good works and right behavior, that honor Jesus, reveal that true faith is already lodged in the heart. Good works and right behavior never produce faith. They are the result of faith. Many claim to have faith without action, without works. How can that be? How can that be? Indeed, a man can be a pastor by profession, can be a bishop by profession, can be an evangelist by profession, but not such in heart.
Let's open our Bibles, people of God, to the book of Titus. Chapter 1, verse 16. I read, they profess to know God, but in works they deny him. Please, look at that again. Read, see, look into his place. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him. Being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. They profess they know God. In other words, they confess they know God. But in their works, they deny him. It is a vain exercise for anyone to profess affinity, I mean closeness to God, according to the flesh. While he's unchanged in heart. Unless he has Christ dwelling in his heart by faith through the word. My mentor, Prophet TV Joshua, said to us, said it is nonsense to confess Jesus is Lord, but behave in a contrary manner. I want to thank the love of my mentor. He taught us the way of righteousness. I want to thank God for his life. Personally, he taught me the way of righteousness. I thank God for meeting a person like him. Thank you, Lord, for this grace. Teaching me the way of righteousness. He said, it is nonsense to confess Jesus is Lord, but behave in a contrary manner. Does what you do show that Jesus is Lord? Does your character testify of your confession of Christ Jesus? What is your character like? How many souls have you won for Jesus through your Christ-like character? Outside there, we can no longer differentiate who is a Christian and who is a non-believer. How many souls have you won for Jesus through your Christ-like character? People of the world are tired of hearing mere sermons. They want to see the sermons in your life. They want to see it in your life. Let your life preach a better sermon. You possess Jesus when you possess his character. Christ and the world are one. Meaning... You possess the word when you possess his character. Because God's word reflects his character. See, we must realize this. God Almighty is not looking for a gift. He is looking for character. He's not looking for gift. You may be a gifted singer. A gifted orator, a gifted speaker, just name it. God is the giver of gifts. But listen, the one who gives the gift is more important than the gift. The one who gives the gift is more important than the gift. for character only your character can testify of your confession of Christ Jesus take note only your character not your gift we must know this 
the church of God must awake. Only your character, not your gift. Only your character can testify of your confession of Christ Jesus. Because God is in you in the person of character. Character is everything. No character, no God. I am quoting my mentor. No character, no God. Unless you are a doer of the word, you are not a believer of the word. Unless you are a doer of the word, you are not a believer of the word. Because doing is believing. Believing demands action. Great action requires performance. Because God's word reflects his character. Believers are simply doers. What are you doing? If you are not a doer of the word, you are missing the point. If you are not a doer of the word, heaven does not know you. Yes. If you are not a doer of the word, heaven does not know you. It is doers of the word that heaven recognizes. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 7 verse 21. What are you doing? Your doing the word is an expression of you believing the word. You need to hear that again. Your doing the word is an expression of you believing the word. Not doing the word is an expression of you not believing the word. What are you doing? Because what a man does expresses his belief. What you do expresses your belief. For you are not only what you say, but also what you do. What are you doing? What are you doing? People of God, see. The word is God speaking to us. When you know that the word is God speaking to you, it will not be difficult for you to act or obey it. It will not be difficult. The problem of believing is made simple. When you know that it is acting on what God has said, what God has spoken. That is it. What the Lord has said, what God has spoken, such as the Lord's commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Someone may want to ask, who is my neighbor? Your neighbor could be your enemy. Could be those who speak ill about you. who does not want to hear anything good about you could be those who do not share the same faith with you we are commanded to love them because a true Christian is known by his love the question do you love are you acting on that word Jesus said in John 14 15 he said if you love me keep my commandments and how do we love God? How do we keep God's commandment? And how do we love him? We love him by doing what he wants. I love this. We love Jesus. We love God by doing what? I can't hear you. 
what he wants. What does God want? He wants you to love. He wants you to forgive. Oh, do you forgive? Do you forgive? Oh, people of God, do you forgive? Is there anyone you need to forgive? By doing what God wants, we demonstrate our love to Him. Not in mere words. Not in mere words. But in action and in truth. Whether we feel like loving or not, it is an obligation. Our responsibility, we must. It is a command. Today, many claim to love God, but they don't love their fellow brothers. How can that be? Don't forget 1 John 4 20. He says there, if you have not loved your brother whom you see, how can you love God whom you have not seen? If you don't love, you are missing the point. You are missing life. Because love is life and life is love. People of God, let us act on what God has said. Let us obey what God has commanded. Let us do it. See, acting on the word is acting in unison with God. You are agreeing with God. Is acting in unison with God. Acting on the word is letting Christ act through you. Do you understand what I'm talking about, people of God? I can't hear. Do you understand? Yeah. Acting on the word is letting Christ have right of way in you. Acting on the world gives Christ opportunity to heal you, to bless you, to deliver you. Anytime we act on the world, something enters our spirit that increases our assurance that yes, we are children of God. It is acting on the world that builds faith in the believer. Child of God, hear this. Hear this. If you do not act on the word, God is impotent in you. If you do not act on the word, God is impotent in you. Is lifeless, dormant in you. And my mentor, Robert Richa says, I won't stop quoting my mentor. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua. He said, what a useless Christian not acting on the word. He said, what a useless Christian not acting on the word. We are made spiritual by living in the word and by the word living in us. And if we must grow spiritually, we must do or act on the word, obey the word. For spiritual growth is a function of obedience to God's word. And our obedience is the only proof of our faith in God. It's the only proof of our faith in God. And obedience is expressed in action, not in words. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 21 from verse 28 to 31. It's expressed in action, not in words. The way of obedience is the way of blessing. For God always rewards the obedience. It does not necessarily 
rewards smart people, good people, wealthy people. It rewards who? Obedient people. People of God, let us awake because of the coming judgment. When God Almighty comes to reward humankind, I mean to inquire of true believers, the question will not be who worshipped in the biggest church. Not who can read and quote the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Not who can teach and preach powerful sermons. Not who can fast and pray all day. Not just the good talkers, the word hearers, the good listeners. It will be who hears, believes, and obeys God's word. I leave you here in faith before of God. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will bless your heart and give you the grace to act on his word, to do his word, to live in his word, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus.